So, when I was filming the video I put up last week about working smarter not longer, I chatted a bit about how I felt before I started university, and thinking about that for that video also made me realise how little I knew about what a physics degree was actually going to be like before I came to university. So obviously I'd done A-level physics, I'd actually read quite a lot of pop science books, so I sort of knew the way physics was divided into different categories, but also not really. I definitely didn't know a lot. So I thought a good video idea might be to chat through the different topics and things you learn about as part of a physics degree. So hopefully this will be interesting and informative to those of you who are planning on starting a physics degree soon, but I'm hoping that it might also be interesting to those of you who definitely aren't going to go into physics or already doing degrees in different subjects, but are still curious about what we get up to. I know a couple of people recently have made videos that I've really enjoyed about different uni subjects, and even though I'm definitely not going to do a second undergraduate degree, you know, once this one is done, I am done. Um, I still really enjoyed those videos and I found it nice to get an insight into what other people do at uni, so I'm hoping that if I make this one well enough, uh, it might be interesting in that way too. So the first thing you'll learn during your physics degree is a lot of maths. Essentially, maths is the language of physics and the maths you know as you leave school is nowhere near enough to describe the kind of phenomena that you'll study during your degree. So particularly in the first couple of years you will have a lot of maths courses. You'll probably start off with learning a bit more calculus than you ever did at school, so differentiation from first principles, multivariable calculus, limits, that sort of thing. You'll learn about vectors and vector calculus, which is essentially a differentiation and integration of vector fields. You'll look at complex numbers, you'll look at ordinary differential equations, partial differential equations, linear algebra, matrices, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, Fourier series, which is essentially you take a function and you break it up into signs and causes, and when you add them together you get the function back. You'll possibly learn about variational calculus and group theory, and you'll also need to learn a lot more statistics than you've done at school. So you'll most likely have a stats module too, where you also look at things like error analysis as well, and all that fun stuff. There's a point to learning all this maths, you'll soon find yourself applying it. So you might start off with a classical Newtonian mechanics course, building on the kind of mechanics you'll have done in A-level maths and A-level physics. Particularly if you're doing a theoretical physics degree, you might then go on to do Lagrangian mechanics and Hamiltonian mechanics, which is essentially a different way of solving the same kind of problems that you've seen before. Lagrangian mechanics is a particularly useful way of looking at classical mechanics, because it is analogous to a lot of the ways we look at quantum mechanics, which is a core course you will definitely end up taking, where you'll look at very small things that do very weird and cool things, like jump through barriers that they shouldn't be able to pass. You'll probably have heard of the famous Schrodinger equation, which you'll use to describe quantum mechanical behaviour. The first time you come across the Schrodinger equation in your degree, it will probably look something like this, which is probably maths notation that you're familiar with, but later on you'll learn a new type of notation, called Dirac notation, which is really useful for describing a lot of quantum effects, and it will end up looking something like this. On the subject of really small physics, you'll also come across nuclear and particle physics, where you'll find out about the fundamental constituents of matter and radiation. You've probably heard of the Standard Model, which is a theory which describes electromagnetic strong and weak interactions. So you'll get to look at that in more depth. You also get to play around with Feynman diagrams, which are pretty neat. Another cool course you do is electromagnetism, which, you guessed it, is the study of electric and magnetic fields. This is where all that vector calculus that you learn in maths will really come in handy. You'll learn about Maxwell's equations, which are a set of four partial differential equations that, along with the Lorentz force equation, can describe all of electromagnetism. If you've looked at electromagnetism, you may also look at electrodynamics and rapidly changing electric and magnetic fields, where the fact that electric and magnetic fields propagate at the speed of light causes a kind of delay and leads to some really cool effects. You'll also do some optics, which is essentially where you'll look at the behaviour of light. You'll look at mirrors and lenses, at diffraction and interference, and you might look at lasers as well, which are really cool. There are essentially two main ways you'll look at optics. For some of it, you'll use geometric optics, which is where you assume that light travels in a straight line, and you'll ignore the fact that it behaves like a wave. But for some phenomena where the wave character of light is important, like in diffraction and interference, you'll use physical optics, which is where you don't ignore the wave character of the light. Then there's thermal physics, which is a kind of catch-all phrase for statistical physics, thermodynamics, and kinetic theory. Essentially, it's just looking at the statistical nature of physical phenomena. You learn about the laws of thermodynamics, which can essentially be summarised as you cannot win, you can only break even. You can only break even at absolute zero, and you cannot reach absolute zero. This is also where you look at the things like thermodynamic potentials, uh, models of gases, so you might have heard of the ideal gas model and the van der Waals model, and thermodynamic processes. You'll also come across relativity, which in my opinion is one of the most brain-hurty bits of the degree. There are two types of relativity, so there's special relativity and there is general relativity. So the theory of special relativity deals with the special case of 
objects moving at a constant speed in a straight line, and general relativity that basically deals with everything else, so you know, like accelerated motion or motion um, that's curved, stuff like that. You may look at cosmology, which is the study of the origin, evolution, and eventual fate of the universe. Within this, you'll look at the dynamics and the large scale structures of the universe. This is where you'll come across dark matter and dark energy. Even if you're doing a theoretical physics degree like me, you'll probably still do at least a year of labs to get your IOP accredited degree. Even though labs weren't really my thing, I can still tell you they were infinitely more interesting than any practicals I have ever done at school. There was a lot more data analysis and error analysis than I'd ever done before, and that was actually really interesting. Within physics, it's really useful to be able to program. Most universities will teach you Python, but my year and the year above at Lancaster did Java. You'll learn how to write programs to model physical phenomena and to solve complex problems that you just can't solve by hand. You've probably heard me bitching about it at some point or another, but at the vast majority of universities, by the end of your degree, you will be very familiar with LaTeX. If you've not heard of LaTeX, lucky you, um, but essentially, it's a thing you can use to make documents, like PDF documents. We have to use it for every report and essentially every bit of written work that we submit. It's different to stuff like Word or Google Docs because it's a plain text editor, it uses markup tags, so if you wanted to make something bold you'd write slash text bf curly brackets and then the thing you wanted to make bold inside instead of just clicking a button. I have to say that even though it is a pain to learn, once you've got the hang of it, it does make things look very nice. You'll probably have some other modules that are specific to the degree scheme you've taken, so if you're doing astrophysics at Lancaster you'd have astronomy modules and astrophysics modules, or if you're doing an experimental degree you might have a lot more lab work, if you're doing a particle degree you might have specific particle labs, and so on. But I hope this video has been interesting and given you a bit of a taste of what a physics degree is like. I've got a lot more videos about my degree that I'm planning on making and putting up soon. So about my favourite textbooks that I've used, about my notes, about how I revised in second year. I'll hopefully also be chatting to some of my friends when we're all back about the different degree schemes and the differences between them. So I hope you stick around and look forward to that. I'd also like to make some more of those little videos I make on certain physics topics soon, so if any of the things I've talked about very broadly in this video um, interest you, please let me know and I'll see if I can think of a video idea to make on that topic in more depth or about a little bit of that topic. And yes, thank you very much for watching.